Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working through probability, the second part, where we're going to be talking about the difference between theoretical probability and relative frequency. So if we start with theoretical probability, that's what we were working on in the previous video. And if we talk about theoretical probability, it's the number of favorable outcomes over the number of possible outcomes. So that's theoretical probability. It's before an event has happened. It's before um, an experiment has occurred. It is th in theory. All right. Then we get to relative frequency. And relative frequency is the number of successful outcomes over the number of trials. So that's what we have as relative frequency. So relative frequency is after an experiment or an event has occurred, whereas probability is before the event or the experiment has occurred. All right, so if we just look at a nice easy example, if we think about a dice, like in the previous video, we have six possible outcomes for a dice. One, two, three, four, five and six. Those are the six different outcomes that the dice could land on. So if I said to you, what is the probability that when I roll this dice that it will land on a six? So you're going to look at your favorable outcomes of it being a six, which is one. There's only one six on the dice out of the number of possible outcomes, which in this case is six. So I have a one out of six chance of the dice landing on a six if I were to throw it. And I could do that for any of the numbers. For example, what is the probability of a dice of the dice landing on a three? I would look at my number of favorable outcomes, which in this case is one, out of my number of possible outcomes, which is six. So I have a one out of six chance of it landing on a three. So that means that I have an equal chance of it landing on a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six, because we have one of each available. So that's the probability. The probability of it landing on a 6 would be 1 out of 6. Probability of it landing on a 2 would be 1 out of 6. The probability of it landing on a 5 would be 1 out of 6, etc. Then we get to relative frequency, and relative frequency is after an event has happened or an experiment has been conducted. So a dice is rolled 25 times. So here we have the outcomes. So we have the outcomes of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Those are the different outcomes that we could have. And then the frequency is the number of times it actually landed on that number. So it landed on a 1 7 times, it landed on a 3 twice, it landed on a 5 4 times. And in total, the dice was thrown 25 times. So we have 25 um, throws in total. All right, so if I wanted to determine the relative frequency of it landing on a 5, then relative frequency is the successful outcomes over the number of trials. So how many times did it land on a 5? It landed on a 5 four times out of how many possible outcomes were there, the number of trials that were conducted, 25. So there was a relative frequency of 4 over 25. So let's check the relative frequency of it landing on a 4. So the relative frequency of it landing on a 4, how many times did it successfully land on a 4? It landed on a 4 8 times out of the number of trials, which was 25. So I have an 8 out of 25 for relative frequency. So <clears throat> if I'm looking at the relative frequency of a 4, it's 8 out of 25 for this particular experiment. But if I were looking at the probability of it landing on a 4, it would still be 1 out of 6. So that's the big difference between relative frequency and theoretical probability. Relative frequency uh, can also be known as experimental probability. All right, let's look at a question. Esme takes the bus to university 40 times. So the bus happens 40 times during a term. The relative frequency of the bus being late is 0 0.3. So now we have a relative frequency being 0 0.3. And the question is saying, how many times was the bus late? So we have the relative frequency of the bus being late as 0 0.3. So that means that 0 0.3 times of the number of times, that's when the bus was late. So to calculate the number of times, I would say 0 0.3, that's the relative frequency of the bus being late, multiplied of the 40 times, of is multiplication, of the 40 times gives me an answer of 12. So we know that the bus was late 
12 times. So we took the 0 0.3, which was the relative frequency, we multiplied it with the number of times the bus uh, was taken during the term, and that gave us the bus being late 12 times. Let's look at another one. Leo plants and grows 50 flowers. So we have 50 flowers, and the table shows the information about the colors. So the question says copy and complete the table. So we have three colors here. We have red, we have yellow, and we have white. So there are 16 red flowers, 28 white flowers, and in total there need to be 50 flowers. So it's very easy to see how many flowers would be yellow. We'd say 50 minus the 16 minus the 28, which would give us a 6. Now in order to uh, determine the relative frequency, I'm going to show you two methods to determine the relative frequency. All right, so if we were working with the relative frequency, because I'm completing the table, the relative frequency of the plant being yellow, how many uh, plants were yellow? Six of them are yellow out of the 50 plants that there are. Now, relative frequency, we can represent it as a fraction, we can represent it as a decimal. So if I were to notice that in the table it's represented as a decimal, so I want to put it as a decimal, so I have a decimal of 0 0.12. So 0 0.12 would be the relative frequency of yellow. All right, now for the relative frequency of white, I'm going to show you two different methods. So I could start with the, the same method and I would say, all right, 28 flowers are white out of the 50 flowers in total. So that gives me a relative frequency of 0 0.56. Alternatively, I could use another method and I could still to determine the relative frequency of white. I could say, all right, the relative frequency of the white will equal total probability 1 minus the frequency of it being red, which is 0 0.32, minus the frequency of it being yellow, 0 0.12, and that would still give us our 0 0.56. Altogether, Leo grows 125 flowers. All right, so now we are increasing the number of flowers from 50. We are now increasing it to 125. How many flowers would you expect to be yellow? So it's a prediction based on the relative frequency of the previous table. All right, so using the information in the table, the relative frequency of the yellow flowers was 0 0.12 when there were 50 flowers, which means that we can assume that the relative frequency will remain constant. So that means that if I have 0 0.12 of the 50 flowers being yellow, that means that 0 0.12 of the 125 flowers will also be yellow. So that means we have 15 yellow flowers. Good. Last example. A coin lands on heads 300 times. So I have a coin. It lands on heads 300 times. The relative frequency of heads is 0 0.6. Now the question is asking us for to work out the number of times the coin was flipped. So working out the number of times the coin was flipped, if I said how many times was the coin flipped, I don't know how many times the coin was flipped, which means that I'm going to replace the number of times the coin was flipped with a variable, so x, a, b, y, any letter. All right, so we know that the relative frequency is 0 0.6 of it landing on heads, and that would be multiplied by the total number of times the coin was flipped to give us an answer resulting in 300 times that the coin landed on heads. So that means that I'm simply just going to put an X here in place there. And to isolate that X, I need to divide both sides by 0 0.6. So therefore, X will be 500. So therefore, the coin was tossed 500 times. I really hope that this video has helped you. More videos coming up.